We're now moving on to section 2.3, food and cooking. And in this first video, we're going to look at the oxidation of alcohols. All alcohols contain the hydroxyl functional group. And it's acceptable to draw it, showing the bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen. Or you can also draw it not showing the bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen. But when you draw it like this, just make sure that the bond always goes from the carbon to the oxygen, not the carbon to the hydrogen. Okay. Now, naming alcohols, well, this two carbons, so two car carbons are normally ethane. We drop the E and put on the all, so it's ethanol. Now, the major physical properties of the alcohols are controlled by the fact that there's hydrogen bonding between the molecules because we have this OH group so we've got the slightly negative oxygen and slightly positive hydrogen so we have hydrogen bonding between alcohol molecules and that means that they've got strong intermolecular forces and that results and they're polar so because they're polar it increases the solubility in water because you've got strong intermolecular forces it increases the boiling points the viscosity and it decreases the volatility okay naming alcohols now for methanol and ethanol there's no there's only one place you can put the hydroxyl group but once you get to propanol okay, you can either put the hydroxyl group on the end carbon or you can put it on the middle carbon. So we have to, these are different molecules, so they need to have different names. So if I've got the OH group on the end carbon, this would be propan 1 all. And here the OH group is on the second carbon, so it's propan 2 all. In this example, we've got a okay, chain of four carbon atoms. We've got a methyl group and a hydroxyl group. If we number from this side, one, two, three, four, the hydroxyl group is on the second carbon, the methyl on the third. Whereas if we name from this side, the methyl is on the second carbon, and the hydroxyl is on the third. Now because it's an alcohol, the position of the hydroxyl group takes precedence. So we number from the side, which gives us the smallest number for the hydroxyl group. So one, two, three, four. So the name of this molecule would be 3-methyl-butan-2-ol. There's a tendency I see in pupils' work, sometimes it's called but to all. Well, that's wrong, and you would not, you'd lose the mark for doing that. So it's butane, just drop the E, and then stick on the all, or the to all in this case. Right, there's three different types of alcohols. You can get a primary, a secondary, or tertiary. And it's very important you can identify what type of alcohol you've got because the chemistry of the alcohol varies depending on whether it's primary, secondary or tertiary. This is a primary alcohol because if you look at the carbon to which the OH is attached, it's only directly attached to one other carbon. Okay? So that's where the primary comes from. This second one is a secondary alcohol because the carbon to which the OH is attached is directly attached to two other carbons, so it's a secondary alcohol. And this last one is a tertiary alcohol because the carbon to which the OH is attached is directly bonded to three other carbons. The only exception to this rule is methanol, shown over here which the carbon to which the OH is attached 
is not attached to any carbons and that's classified as a primary alcohol so as I said the chemistry of the alcohol is controlled by whether or not it's primary secondary or tertiary and the most interesting reaction of alcohols that we're going to look at is what happened when we add them to a mild oxidizing agent for example acidified potassium dichromate solution so here's our acidified potassium dichromate solution uh, it's orange in color because the dichromate ion is orange but if the alcohol gets all that we add to the dichromate solution is oxidized then the dichromate ions are reduced to chromium ions which give you a bluey green color so the alcohol produces this color change from orange to bluey green we know it's been oxidized now if we put in a primary alcohol we see this color change primary alcohol is oxidized by acidified dichromate solution it gets oxidized in aldehyde which we'll discuss in a few minutes and aldehyde is further oxidized to a carboxylic acid if we put in a secondary alcohol we see this color change the secondary alcohol gets oxidized to a ketone if we put in a tertiary alcohol then we don't see this color change so tertiary alcohols do not get oxidized primary and secondary alcohols do and what I want to do now is look at the products of the oxidation of the primary and secondary alcohols the aldehydes and the ketones okay. so here's a primary alcohol propane one all so if we add this to a certified dichromate solution it gets oxidized and we get changes right this carbon here so we have our three carbons the first two with just the H's attached don't change so this carbon loses the OH group and gets a double bond O and this is an aldehyde whereas the propane 2 all again the changes take place to the carbon to which the OH is attached the other two carbons just stay as they were and again it loses the OH and forms a carbon double bond O and this is a ketone now aldehydes and ketones are quite similar they both contain this carbonyl group okay, called a carbonyl group and they both contain it the main difference is that in aldehydes the carbonyl group is always on the end of the chain whereas in the ketone it's never on the end of the chain so the naming of this aldehydes all end in the name al so this is propanal and ketones end in on so it's propan propanone or let's say propan on because in the ketone depending how long the chain is you have to say where the carbon double bond O is whereas in aldehyde you never have to say where the carbonyl group is because it's always by definition on the first carbon so you should never write propan one al the propan al tells you the C double bond O is on the end carbon whereas with the ketone you need to say where the carbon double bond O is <clears throat> as regards to the physical properties of aldehydes and ketones are very similar but they're different from the alcohols because they've lost the hydrogen bonding uh, neither of these two molecules have an OH group anymore so they have far lower boiling points and have higher volatility than the alcohols the isomers of each other but they're not in the same homologous series because they have different chemical properties it's easy to oxidize the aldehydes but it's not easy to oxidize the ketones so if you try to tell the difference between these two compounds test it with various oxidizing agents so for example if you add them both to 
acidified dichromate solution the aldehyde you would get the colour change the ketone you wouldn't and what you would produce from the aldehyde is you turn it into a carboxylic acid again it's on this carbon which the changes take place so you get a C double bond OH group the other two carbons don't really change this oxidation can also be brought about by using Tollins, sorry, Benedict's or failing solution uh, in this case you get the colour change from blue to brick red this will only oxidise an aldehyde to ketone it won't oxidise an alcohol to an aldehyde or, a, yeah, or an alde uh, alcohol to a ketone so this transformation here can brought, be brought about by acidified dichroate solution Benedict's or failing solution or Tollins reagent which in which case the colour change if you remember was from a colourless to a silver mirror being produced okay let's look at uh, the products of the re oxidation of the aldehydes the carboxylic acid okay, so if you dissolve a uh, carboxylic acid in water it will split up to give you H plus signs just like any other acid okay. so I'd like you put HCl in water it will split up to give you H plus ions and chloride ions and it's those H plus ions which uh, gives it the properties of an acid okay. let's say we've got ethanoic acid when you put that in water it splits up to give you an H plus ion question is what hydrogen turns into the H plus ion? Well, it's this one here. It's a uh, hydrogen on the carboxyl group. So it splits there to give you an H plus ion and leaving you the ethanoate ion, the H3CC double bond O, O minus. Yeah. So the carboxylic acids give you hydrogen ions just like any other acid so it undergoes all the reactions that hydrochloric acid would undergo so if you reacted it with a base like a metal hydroxide it would form a salt and water if it was sodium hydroxide the salt would be sodium ethanoate and to react with a metal oxide to give you salt plus water react with a metal carbonate to give you a salt plus water plus carbon dioxide gas so it does behave like other acids Finally, I want to just review another way of recognising whether a reaction is oxidation or reduction. Okay. So here we have ethanol being oxidised to the aldehyde, the ethanol, and being further oxidised to ethanoic acid. One way of determining that this is an oxidation reaction is by looking at the O to H ratio. So in ethanol, the O to H ratio is 1 to 6 one oxygen, six hydrogens. But when we oxidise it to ethanol, we remove two hydrogens, so the O to H ratio is one to four, it's increasing. And then when we oxidise it to ethanoic acid, we add a hydrogen, so add an oxygen, so the O to H ratio becomes one to two. So we get an increase in O to H ratio, which is a sign of an oxidation reaction. It is also possible to reduce these compounds and move in the other direction so from ethanoic acid to ethanol and from ethanol to ethanol and that would be a reduction reaction and to carry out a reduction reaction the chemical that we need to use is lithium aluminium hydride which has got the chemical formula LiAlH4 
Okay, so in this lecture I haven't listed the learning objectives or learning outcomes as I did in the previous ones. Uh, what I've changed to doing is just listing at the end three, four, five things you really must know about this topic. It's not a list of everything you need to know, everything you should know, but it's the things, the high things you really should know. So, you should be able to recognise and name alcohols, aldehydes, ketones and carboxylic acids. Be able to identify the type of alcohol, primary, secondary, or tertiary. You should be able to determine the products of oxidation and reduction of alcohols, aldehydes, ketones, and carboxylic acids. Be able to name the oxidizing and reducing agents required to bring about the above reactions, including the colour changes. And be able to recognise oxidation and reduction reactions from changes in the O2H ratio. So if you can do all those things, you know this topic very well.